solo album that I was hired to do of uh, Big Spot, Vitavec, James B. Johnson, George Gershwin. You can still find that CD, by the way, and, uh, and Duke Ellington. Uh, and it's great, because the reason it's still available is because the producer, who was very much of a musicologist, picked material that was that had hardly been, the Bix Beierbeck stuff I played, only Bix Beierbeck had played it himself on recording. So the material was rare. It kept the stuff in circulation. You can still find it. You want to see a nice picture of me in 1976. <laughs> Mustache, everything, you know. <laughs> um, but the second album was uh, something I did for Andrew Records in, in Germany. And I was a big Keith Jarrett freak. I mean, I just loved Keith Jarrett. From when I found him somewhere around 1970 until into the 80s, I just, that did it for me. I loved Herbie and Jake and all those guys. But that was a new level of love because there was some kind of a, almost a classical feeling that the, the others weren't doing. And I think I came more from that feeling, you know? So um, I did this album, which I thought was like that kind of intensity of the Keith Jarrett thing. And I really liked it. Uh, and then I went out on my first tour with Archie Shepp for a six week tour. The first time I played with a rhythm section for six weeks, you know, talk about not playing with rhythm sections. It was always one at a time. After six weeks, my time was so much better. And then I put the record, the recording on, and I went, oh no. I wish I had recorded this after the six weeks, you know? You're always gonna do that. When you do your first record, <coughs> I guarantee something's gonna happen afterwards. You're gonna go, oh God, I wish I had done this first. You know, like there's some new thing you learn. It's, it's just the way you feel about your first recording, you know? And now I, I just came, let's, I tried one day, let me see, let me see how. It's brilliant and it sucks. You know, every time I started with a tempo, the tempo was faster. Then it, more, it went more into a legato with a pedal and, you know, I couldn't, I didn't sustain anything because I was never comfortable with rhythm. Mm -hmm. So from that time on, it was so painful that I decided to make the emphasis rhythm. And that's what I would counsel you from this point. Make the source of uh, exercises that you devise rhythmic, whether it's clear eighth notes against a counterpoint left hand comp or clear combination of two hands or simply clear eighth notes in the right hand in a time. Uh, rhythm, which is the thing I didn't want to do. I have that European thing of more being fascinated by the harmony. But, you know, a lot of times we're, we're rhythmically weak. And once I discovered that, that was about 1982, I made rhythm my, my main practice. If, even if I worked on new ideas, they had to be put in a rhythm. Because I wanted rhythm to feel as good as rubato. And I don't think I've even gotten there to this day. But when I haven't played in a while, the first thing that goes is the rhythm. Because it wasn't natural to me. You know? Harmony, I always got that. You know? But rhythm. So that's what I would do with you. I was not, you know, there's more to be said about that, but one suggestion is you make a, a, a line of eighth notes, and you can make an interesting line of eighth notes. And you practice it against a metronome, one bar, resting three. And you can put that eighth note, anybody can do this. You can put that eighth notes in any bar. So it could be the second bar, or it could be the third bar. So the first bar sounds like this. Dabba 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 da. Three, four. Dabba 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 da. Right? And what if you put in the second bar? One. Dabba 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 da. Four. One. Dabba 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 da. They have a different feeling depending on what bar you're in. One. Two. Dabba 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 four. One. Two. Three. Dabba 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 one. So it gave me a sense of the four bar phrase. But when you're playing on these tunes in time, the wider sense is not to play on every bar but to play loosely over four bars, or eight bars even, depending on how fast it is. That's one exercise. Another exercise, and all these are in my video, by the way, the one in Jazz Heaven, which you should check out. There's really great rhythmic exercise in there. Another one is you play eight notes, but you leave one out. These are rhythms you never considered because you play in sweeping notes, right? So for example, if I leave out the first note, it's like the first eighth note. ba da ba da ba da ba da or ba da ba da ba da ba three. I'm not talking about jazz now. I'm talking about muscle memory. I'm talking about motor skill. The more motor skill you amass, 
the freer you are. It's not about being chopsy. It's just about being freer. So with the first eighth note left out, it's like this one. Three, four. Three, four. I mean, you probably never really nailed a rhythm like that in your young life. Mm -hmm. And if you nailed it, you'd already start to notice a ripple effect in your improvising. Mm -hmm. It's like taking this beautiful flesh you've created and putting a spine in it. <laughs> a bone structure, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Then the second note is like this. Da, 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 da. You'll recognize every one of these rhythms, but you never thought of them as the absence of one eighth note. Da, 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 da. Third note is like this. Da, ba, ba, da, ba, da, ba. Fourth note is like this. Da, ba, da, ba, ba, da, ba. Fifth note is like this. I like this one. Da, ba, da, ba, ba, da, ba. And then imagine if you were comfortable with that kind of thing. You know, you're playing with change. Six points. Da 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 da. No, that was, yeah, that was right. Da 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 da. Seventh one. Da 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 da. Ah. Eighth one. Da 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 da. See, this is not jazz. This is language. Mm. If we can separate the, the style thing, because the style thing then it becomes about stylistic preferences. At this point in your young lives, and I mean everybody in this room, and I, this kind of contradicts what I was just saying to you guys before, but it doesn't really. Practice things that increase your motor skills. Because the more freer you are, technically, that thing you were playing, Morgan, the easier it is to play that. The more you would follow <coughs> the things on top of it while still playing it. That's the value of acquiring more technique. The technique is not the message. It just makes whatever you're playing easier to play. You played Stella by Starlight because you know it so well. Look how creative you were. Now if I said play very early, do you know that tune? Mm -hmm. It's a great Bill Evans tune. Check it out. Or in your own sweet way. Mm -hmm. Oh, these are tunes like Stella. <laughs> mm -hmm. But if you didn't know them, you'd have to play them so straight. Mm -hmm. This is the purpose of technique or familiarity. <clears throat> Getting to the point where you can mess around with it and you're still playing it.